Well, good morning, everyone. I'm going to share a brief devotional with you and um, coming to you from what Dave Compton would have called in the old days at uh, AM 950 WPET would have called Studio B, which is my office here at the church. Um, I want to share some scripture with you from Mark's Gospel, chapter 35, excuse me, chapter 4, verse 35, and this is regarding uh, Jesus calming the storm and the sea. And the same day, verse 35, when the even was come, he saith unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. That's important that Jesus said, let us pass over to the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships, and there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. Let's suppose that the uh, Jesus and the disciples were about halfway across the Sea of Galilee. It's about seven miles wide, 15 miles long. And uh, so they're midway through the sea, and this great storm comes up. And it says in verse 38, now, now it tells us that in verse 37 that there arose a great storm. It was wind and waves. They beat into the ship so that the ship, the fishing vessel type thing they would have been in, was now full. And he, Christ, was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, Master, carest not that we perish, or don't you care that we're about to die? <clears throat> and he arose and rebuked the wind. And he said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? Well, I'm already asked that God would add his blessings to the reading of our word. I want to share with you a little bit about this story quickly. Um, when I was in third grade elementary school, I had a teacher named Miss Graham. And so often she would come into the class and she'd say, okay, student. Now remember, we're third grader. She said, okay, students. Now she said, let's put on our thinking caps. And she'd do like this. And so some of us would pretend to put on our thinking caps, you know, and she would want to make us think about something. Well, I want you to do that this morning. Put on your thinking cap. I want you to go with me to the land of Israel. Uh, my wife and I have been blessed to go on four occasions. Uh, first with Dr. Glenn Matthews on a tour. Second time I went was with Dr. Steve Cook, Jewish Worldwide Missions Ministries. And he asked me before we ever went on the trip, he said, where would you like to speak? Well, I never imagined speaking in the land where Jesus walked, but he gave me that opportunity. And I prayed about it and I said, would it be possible for me to, to speak uh, somewhere around the Sea of Galilee? He said, how about in a boat on the Sea of Galilee? And I said, man, that would be awesome. So I used this little devotional here, and I'm going to use it again today just to share something with you. My thought is this. When my God does something, he does it right. And when you start thinking about what Jesus says, he tells his disciples, he says, let's get in this little boat. It would be a little larger than a fishing vessel that they would have used in Christ's day. But uh, we get in the ship that day and we go out to the middle of the sea. It's a very calm day. But in Jesus' day, he goes out. No doubt it was very calm. And uh, he goes to sleep. He went, He was It was showing the humanity of Christ. He goes to sleep. Uh, he's asleep on a pillow. And Chris Davis did a message on this maybe a year or so ago, and he did a great job on this, talking about how soundly Christ was sleeping. Uh, he was sleeping so soundly that he didn't even notice the storm. I mean, it was a storm. Uh, man, it was almost what we would call in weather terms today the perfect storm. Uh, there was probably hurricane force winds. Uh, water coming into the ship had filled the, the little boat up, and it was about ready to capsize. These fishermen who were uh, these apostles, some of them were experienced fishermen. They had seen storms on the Sea of Galilee, but they had never seen a storm like this one. And they were terrified. They thought they were going to die. They go wake Jesus up. Master, master, don't you care that we're going to die? And he wakes up. He doesn't say this, but, you know, I'm thinking if this were me, I'm going to say, good grief, guys. Now, here he is, Christ. He's God in the flesh. And he told them they're going to the other side. And if Christ says you're going to the other side, you're going to the other side. And they didn't quite understand that. So he gets up from his sleep. He steps out to the edge of the, of the fishing vessel, raging storm about to toss the, the ship over. And he says, peace be still. Verse 39, and the wind ceased and there was a great calm. 
Now, this goes from a raging storm about to capsize the boat to a complete calm in a matter of seconds. I want to explain something to you here. The day that I was doing this devotion on the Sea of Galilee, it was a normal, beautiful day. But even on a normal, beautiful day in the middle of the Sea of Galilee, there's a little bit of a rocking of the boat, and there's little gentle waves lapping against the side of the boat. So there's a little bit of turbulence. And so when they get in the midst of the sea and there's this horrific storm that they think is going to kill them, Jesus says, peace be still. And the Greek here says, one writer put it this way, that the sea became like glass. So it goes from a raging storm to not a ripple in just a few seconds. And the, the, the uh, disciples realize that he has power over the wind and over the storms and over nature and everything. He calms it from a raging storm to, to zero ripples in a matter of seconds. And to that I say, when my God does something, he does it right. This was a storm like they had never seen before. And our nation, our world is going through a storm like we've never seen before. We've never seen a storm like this pandemic, and it's something like we've never seen before. But God's not worried. God's not scared. God's not all shook up. God is perfectly calm, and he wants us to remember that he's got this under control. He told the disciples they were going to the other side, and that's exactly what they did. And if God says he'll get us through this, he'll get us through this. Now, I want to close this with a personal illustration, and then I'll be done. Years ago, there was a man in my home church named Joseph Maynard. Picture, if you will, put on your thinking caps again. Picture, if you would, a little average size man, maybe a little on the short side, 5'6", five, 5'7", five, maybe. I'm 6'5", so that's short to me. Uh, so white hair, rosy red cheeks, and he was on up in years. He was in the hospital. The doctors had told him he was paralyzed. He would never walk again. This is a true story. He's landing in the hospital one night, and he gets the hiccups, calls the, uh, hits the nurse's button, and nobody comes. So he begins to pray, and he tells the story like this. He said, as he began to pray that night, he said, the devil came into his room. He said, the devil jumped on my bed. He said, straddle me like a horse and screamed at me. He said, don't you call on, don't you call on God in prayer. He said, get out of here, devil. I've already called him, and he is on his way. And he begins to pray. And he said, the Lord took him back to his childhood and showed him some things that had gone on since his childhood, brought him up through, uh, through his recent days. And, and then the next thing he knew, he was, he was awake. The devil was gone, and uh, he, he just felt a calm. He said there was no hiccups, no pain whatsoever. About that time, his doctor walks in the room, says, hello, Mr. Maynard, how you doing? He said, I can walk. He said, what are you talking about? He said, I can walk. My Jesus came in last night and healed me, and I can walk. He said, Mr. Maynard, how many times have I told you? You cannot walk, and from the testing we've done, you'll never walk again. You need to accept that. He said, I can too walk. My Jesus healed me. He said, okay, if you can walk, show me. Get out of the bed and walk. He jumps out of bed, walks across the room, walks out the door, starts down the hallway. The doctor has to go get him. He said, Mr. Maynard, Mr. Maynard, come back. Gets him back in the room, sits him on the bed takes a little hammer and taps on his knee. He said, can you feel that? He said, yes, I can, and and uh, takes a hammer, a hammer or a needle or something and pokes him on the other leg. He said, can you feel that? He said, yes, I can. He said, you give me that needle, and I'll poke you a few times. And uh, he said, I don't understand. He said, I told you my Jesus came in and healed me last night, and when Jesus does something, he does it right. Well, just like on the, just like on the Sea of Galilee in the storm, Jesus had calmed the sea. And when my God does something, he does it right. Don't forget in all this that we need to have faith that's greater than fear because God didn't give us the spirit of fear. And if we'll look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, I believe with all my heart, mind, body, and soul that he's going to get us through these very trying times. Father, we do pray that you'd bless the reading and teaching of the word. I pray, Lord, that this would go into the minds and hearts of listeners and it would be a help to them in this devotional this morning. Lord, just bless us and help us through this day today. In Christ's name, amen.